What's up guys, my name is Joe, we are back with another episode of British Guy Reacts and we're going to be reacting to Across the Pond. It's been a little while since we've reacted to any of these videos and summer will be approaching us before we know it. So we're reacting to five summer objects I only encountered after moving to America. If you are new around here, please do subscribe to the channel, give the video a like, comment down below, subscribe to the Across the Pond channel if you're not already, which I assume most of you are. If you're watching me, you've probably already watched Lawrence before. Let's jump straight in. Let's go. These ice cubes are a lifesaver when you run out at parties, and they're made by wizards. Hello, I'm Lawrence, and I'm on a quest to uncover all of the memos that Britain and America lost in the pond, and one of those memos pertains to things, objects, stuff, particularly summer stuff. 42 years ago, in the winter of 2020, I did a video about five winter objects that, that I only encountered after moving to America. And this video serves as its summer counterpart, and as was the case with that video, I'll not be including food items. That's its own video, right? Just wanted to make that clear for people you like... You've got to keep those videos rolling over and you. Basically, man-made objects that are associated with the summer. And as we go through this list, keep in mind that some of these things might have a presence in Britain. It's just that either A, I was sheltered, or B, they're shown more prominently in America. And so, without further ado, let's take a look at five summer objects that let's do I it. only encountered. Let's see if I've seen any of these before. To America. I think it's fair to say that I have a love hate relationship with ceiling fans. Now, when I say overhead fans, I'm not referring to Lost in the Pond supporters who sit in the rafters at the live events that I don't have. I'm referring to fans on the ceiling. In British homes, they're exceedingly rare, whereas in America... This is one, you know, that I, I'm going to have to not disagree with, but my house actually had a ceiling fan. We had a conservatory. We used to get ridiculously hot in the summer and ridiculously cold in the winter. Kind of made it useless, but it had a ceiling fan that we could just click on and it was a light and a ceiling fan all in one. So there we go. I actually had one yeah, of these. I've yet to enter a house well, my that mom doesn't and dad have did, one. Not me. And that includes my mansion that has about three. It's not a mansion. First of all, when you're a YouTube sensation, the last thing you need in your <laughs> I studio love it when it goes is an overhead YouTube fan. Because it messes up your hair and your voice. I realize that this is a niche problem and that certain people need to check themselves before they wreck themselves. <laughs> but the other first world problem that they produce is I never know how many times to pull the string. When we were kids, right, we used to, we also used to put a ping pong table in the conservatory and we used to throw, put the ceiling fan on and then throw ping pong balls up at it and they just used to ping around the glass like bing, 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 bing. My mum wasn't happy when she saw us doing it, but it was, it was good fun. It was very good fun. <laughs> Apparently on most units, it's three. And this is the sort of thing they should tell you at customs when you first arrive. Are you traveling with family? Are you here on business? Oh, and by the way, pull it three times and not four, you numpty. But I said it's a love-hate relationship. Whereas Lost in the Pond fans cheer me up. Overhead fans cool me down. <laughs> and this is particularly useful when your studio doesn't have one of these. Aircon. I'll admit it, when I first heard about America's propensity for using air conditioning, I thought it was weird. Why would you want that blowing through your home when you can just crack open a window and hear the sounds of nature? And I thought it was particularly unusual that anybody would want to partially obscure their window with this big box. We're British, we want to see outside. We want to see what that chaffinch is up to. We want to see if it's a light drizzle or a heavy downpour. We want to see the joggers. So I thought it was as weird as the next person. And then I met the next person. His name was Mick from Stockport. And Mick from Stockport had never actually left Stockport, but he had all kinds of views about the rest of the world, including America. And he absolutely lamented the artificial nature of American air conditioning. Two weeks later, he died of heat stroke. <laughs> Mick is like any other British person that I talk about on this channel, entirely fictional. But he was as stubborn as I was when it came to air conditioning. We just don't have it in UK homes. We don't. But after moving to America, I saw the error of my ways. If you saw my recent video on how British heat waves ain't got nothing on America, you might have a clue as to why the absence of them would constitute a public health hazard. In many parts of the US, it's extremely common for the summer temperature to rise above 90 degrees Fahrenheit. The simple truth is, in July, an American home wouldn't be fit for humans, were it not for the installation of AC. Also, it does help that my cat has an aircon obsession. Well, that's loud. 
but yeah we, we just don't even have a, a need for it we might get like one or two days a year where it it gets kind of tough there and it gets hot like sticky hot and you just can't get comfortable the worst part is at night sometimes it is difficult to sleep at night when it's really hot in england but we it doesn't happen that often it's not really something worth investing in central heating essential don't Aircon, get me wrong. Not so in much. the UK, inflatable mattresses are as popular as inflatable people, and you sometimes use them both at the same time. But in my experience, British people draw the line at using them while camping. That's the blow-up mattresses, not so much the other one. <laughs> in America, they have a term for this. It's called glamping. Glamping is an example of a poor man's toe, or as it says in my dictionary, a portmanteau. It just means glamorous camping, and I was introduced to this concept by none other than old-fashioned AF my wife so make sure you sign up as soon as you're finished watching this video in the height of summer we went a camping in southern indiana and i prepared myself for days on end for the enormous back pain i would feel afterward see this is what british campers do we gear ourselves for a night or two of blissful torture and this was the illusion <laughs> i'd afforded myself on this visit to southern indiana right down to the moment that i put the last peg in the ground and then my wife surprised me by pulling from the van an inflatable mattress and two pillows and a headboard and a dressing table and it filled me with dread because i'd just signed a lease elsewhere but also because it made me panic that my wife wasn't who i thought she was but it turns out that this is quite normal in america people here don't go camping to recreate the living conditions of neanderthals they do it to sit around campfires and eat s'mores and play songs so whatever you learn from the 1999 American documentary, The Blair Witch Project, forget it, that's old news. Now maybe I'm becoming Americanized. Over time, I've become comfortable with America's obsession with being comfortable. That's probably why when it comes to my new house, I want to add one of these. Yeah, when we used to go camping when I was a kid, we'd just use sleeping bags. You put your tent on a nice patch of grass, you know, a bit soft. And I'm pretty sure we just used sleeping bags. I'm almost certain we did. I guess maybe you could use like a yoga mat or something. Nothing against using an air mattress though. Makes sense, doesn't it? It's actually quite smart. Better than sleeping on the hard ground. Well done, America. I'm going to Port go out swings. on a limb here with no data to back up what I'm about to say. Per household, America has way more front porches than Britain. I've been to various parts of the United States and having done so, one thing stands out as a constant among its streets. Friends and families getting hammered on the front porch. Sounds fun. In Britain, we must like our privacy because if we have porches, they tend to be in the back garden slash yeah. yard. Either way, there's one element of porches that I didn't encounter until moving to America swing benches again that's not to say we don't have them in britain they're just more prevalent in america and again i don't have data to back that up it's an observation i've now lived in the us for about a third of my life and in that time you do get a good sense for america's furniture choices and if it turns out that my observation is numerically incorrect the wife and i will be more than happy to tip the scales back in america's favor that was just an excuse to show you my empty front porch <laughs> i should have played it cool much like this bag dice if you take a knife and try to cut an ice cube in half you might have i mean we do get bag dice in england but we'd only really use it for parties um if you if you're having a house party you know you know, and it's summer or if you're going even like camping or you're going to like the horse racing or like a football tournament you might take a cool box you put some bags of ice in there with your drinks to keep it nice and cold but we won't really use it in the house you know what I mean? Special occasion, not special occasions, but for occasions that require a lot of ice. Have A, a mess, and B, a perfect metaphor for the final entry on our list. In other words, this is two entries in one. It can shatter everything Americans hold dear when they discover that British people on the whole don't put ice cubes in their water. And perhaps this creates an illusion that British people eschew ice cubes altogether, but that couldn't be further from the truth. We, have the we ice do cube sometimes trays. put them in water, but also pims, mostly that. And growing up in Britain, in my family, we had one of those ice yeah, trays. Ice cube trays, that's with what water we use. And put in the freezer. In fact, this is something that Americans, the British, and people the world over have in common. But I was 26 years old when I discovered that you could buy pre-made ice cubes in a bag. These ice cubes are a lifesaver when you run out at parties, and they're made by wizards. 
And it just happens that my discovery of them came about in America. This is an example of me living a sheltered life. Because it turns out you can absolutely get them in Britain. You can. They're just not displayed as prominently. <laughs> I'm mostly talking about gas stations. One thing you'll notice when you drive into BP, ironically British Petroleum, is that outside of them, they feature subtly decorated ice cubes. Oh yeah, vendors. we're not sold it like that. So if you're hosting a party that night and you're running a bit behind, don't go to Walmart. Go to BP. You can get everything you need. That's it for this episode. I'm going to go through to the next room, strip down to my underpants, and stand in front of the AC. <laughs> if you like what you saw here, don't forget to follow me on Twitter. at. Okay, guys, do go and subscribe to the Lost in the Pond YouTube channel. Go follow him on Twitter. Subscribe to my channel. I hope you guys did enjoy the video. This one, it's not like I hadn't heard of any of the objects before. Porch rings was a bit of a random one. Bags of ice we definitely do have in England, but it's not displayed like that. And I guess we don't use it in the same way you guys use it. It's very rare that you're going to buy a bag of ice. Um, AC, yeah, we definitely don't have that. That would be nice to have. But yeah, that's it for today. I'll see you for the next one. Take it easy. Peace.